Friends, let me introduce myself. I am Professor C. S. Prakash Rao, working as professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering of National Institute of Technology, Warangal. I am instrumental in introduction of an MTech course on Computer Integrated Manufacturing at National Institute of Technology, Warangal, from the year 1999 to 2000 onwards. I received several awards, including AP Scientist Award in 2008 and AP Engineer of the Year Award in 2008. The course on group technology, the definition of group technology is goes like this. Group technology is a manufacturing technique and a philosophy to increase production efficiency by grouping the parts, exploiting the underlying concept of sameness of a component based upon the shape, dimension, process routes, etc. Group technology is the realization that many problems are similar and that by grouping similar problems, a single solution can be found to a set of problems, thus saving time and effort. In 1958, engineer S. P. Mitrofanov has written a book on this, the scientific principles of group technology. And the concept of group technology was introduced by Mitrofanov. He introduced this concept for the post Second World War scenario to quickly design parts and manufacturing of the parts using this technology. Let us see why should we group parts or what is why group technology is required. Nowadays, if you observe the manufacturing of the components worldwide, average lot sizing is decreasing. Part variety has been increasing. Number of parts being produced or part variety is increasing. Increased use of variety of material for these parts for diversified properties and requirement of closure tolerances. These are all the various reasons parts Varieties is increasing, part characteristics are increasing, and there is some methodology which is required to exploit the sameness so as to reduce the cycle times of design as well as manufacturing. If you see the classification of production systems, production systems, the variety is increasing. When the variety is increasing and uh, production volume is reducing, we have to go for the use of uh, standard and general machinery or manufacturing cells. On the other hand, when the variety is less and volume of the product being produced per annum is more, we have to go for transfer lines and our special purpose machines like that. Nowadays, today the most requirement is that the part variety is more and production volume is more. So we neither use transfer lines nor use general purpose machine for this. So we are now have to design mid -vo volume, mid variety production system. How do we design the mid volume, mid production variety system? A group technology is one answer for that. Group technology based production systems occupies the space in between transfer lines as well as the standard general machinery which is the answer for mid volume, mid production, mid variety production system. Group technology is used in many fields of engineering, maybe design engineering, sales, inventory, planning, purchasing, assembly, management, manufacturing engineering, data processing, maintenance, tool engineering, estimations, industrial relations, quality control, cost accountancy, in variety of fields of engineering, the group technology is used. What are the best methods to group parts based on the group technology? Here you can see in this slide, there are three types. One is visual method, second method is coding and classification method, 
Third method is production flow analysis method. Let us discuss one after the other. Visual methods. Visual methods are defined as a classification of parts into families by looking at the physical parts or their photographs and arrange them grouping having similar features. One of the first major success stories of group technology is in the United States made the changeover using the visual inspection method. Of course, this is a very, very old method and a crude method as well. The advantage of this method is very low cost, but it is the other disadvantage is that it is least accurate. The other method is coding and classification method. Coding and classification method is defined as classification of parts into families based on geometric shape and complexity, dimension, type of material, shape of new material required and required levels of accuracy of the finish, finished parts etc. Using the coding system, each part is assigned a numerical or alpha numerical code. Based upon the code, we can group the parts. Each digit of the code represents a feature of the component. It's a very versatile method, very widely used method in the group technology. Normally, for classification and coding schemes, there are three kinds of coding structures are in use. One structure is called as hierarchical coding structure. Second structure is called as chain type coding structure. The other type of structure is mixed code structure. Let us discuss what is this hierarchical code structure. Hierarchical structure known as monocode in which the interpretation of each successive symbol depends on the value of preceding symbols. If 1, 2, 3 code is there, the meaning of 3 depends upon 2. The meaning of 2 and 3 depends on 1. That's how this code works. Lot of information can be embedded in a simple code. That's one advantage of this code. Coming to the second type of structure, that is chain type coding structure, which is also known as polycode, in which the interpretation of each symbol in the sequence is always the same. It does not depend on the value of preceding symbols. For, for example, in the code 1, 2, 3, 3 has a particular meaning, 2 has a, some meaning, 1 has some meaning. Each is independent of the other. That's how 1, 2, 3 code can be read as a, a single entity code as each digit represents a different entity. And it doesn't depend on previous code like that. That's how very, very less kind of information can be incorporated in this code, whereas very easy to understand the code. The advantage of this code is very, very easy to understand. The third variety of code is mixed coding structure, which is a hybrid of previous codes. If you take mixed code structure, some portion of the code follows monocode structure. The remaining portion of the code follows uh, polycode structure, which has got the advantages of both the coding structures that we have previously discussed. So now let us discuss the monocode structure. Each code number is classified by preceding characteristics. You can see in this slide, you have M21, M20, M11, M10. M21 has got meaning of first M and then M2 and then M21. M21 indicates it is a prismatic component without holes. M20 indicates prismatic component having holes. M11 indicates rotational components with no holes. M10 indicates rotational components with holes. As we have seen the figure previously, one indicates non-rotational parts, prismatic parts, two indicates rotational parts. Within these groups, we can further classify by feature. Presence of holes, zero indicates no holes, one indicates holes. 
that's how the previously m20 indicates it's a prismatic parts without with holes the advantages of the monocoda this code can represent a large amount of information with a very few code positions and the cons or disadvantages it is potentially complex coding structure hierarchical codes are difficult to develop because of all branches in the hierarchy must be defined poly code structures each digit in the code position represents a distinct bit of information regardless of previous digit the advantages of this code is easy to formulate the disadvantage is less information is stored per digit therefore to get a meaningful comparison of shape very long long codes are required comparison of coded parts require more work some of the important systems that are existing today to classify code and classify the parts are opis classification system which was developed in university of aachen germany it's a non proprietary type of chain type system next bridge system developed by brisbane incorporation next kk3 is another system which is a japanese based classification system cod code the manufacturing data systems incorporation has developed this and another code is cut plan metcut associates has developed this d class decision classification system which was developed in brigham young university multi class system which was developed by oir organization for industrial research which is a hierarchical code and decision tree coding system another one is part analog system developed by lawrence and co let us discuss the opis classification and coding system the opis classification and coding system consists of the following 13 digits numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 up to 9 digit length is one code and followed by a b c d it is the another code 1 to 9 follows mono code structure a b c d follows poly code structure the first nine intended to convey design and the manufacturing data of the part in which first to five digits 1 2 3 4 5 5 which is called as form code 1 2 3 4 5 5 is called as form code it describes the primary design attribute of the part such as part is rotational part is prismatic part has got gears external gears cut on that or some other external shape elements are there all these features are described in the basic code which is called as form code the next four digits 6 7 8 9 called as supplementary code which indicates some of the attributes that would be used in manufacturing the extra four digits a b c d refers to a secondary code which is intended to describe manufacturing production operation type and sequence and sometimes the manufacturer can have his own data embedded in this code a b c d i am now going to describe the opis coding client classification system using this figure you can see this figure in this for the first five digits form code what numerical number is used in the first code second code like that you can easily see in this figure suppose the part is a rotational part and has got length by diameter ratio l by d ratio we call it as an l by d ratio which is less than 0.5 if it is less than 0.5 we can use zero if it is 
in between 0.5 to 3 we can use 1 if it is equal to more than 3 then we can use 2 like this we can use 0 1 2 3 4 5 codes in the first digit position for rotational parts if based upon L by D ratio similarly in the second digit which describes about the external shape if external shape elements are without no machining is there we can use zero some smooth no shape elements we can use one step to one and no shape elements we can use two the screw thread is there you can use three like that we can use zero to nine codes in this second digit the meaning of all zero to nine codes have been given it here coming to third digit which describes the internal shape and internal shape elements without any hole is there we can use zero shape element is a through hole we have to use one internal through hole is there without no shape elements we can use two step put to one end and some kind of thread is there we can use three like that we can use digits up to nine to describe all internal shape elements in the digit 3. In the digit 4, it describes plane surface machining. We can use 0 there if there is no plane surface machining. We can use 1 if a external shape elements plane surface machining is there and 2, 3, 4 like that for variety of external shape elements machining. We can use the digit 4 for plane surface machining. If there is no plane surface machining, we can use 0 and remaining 1 to 9, we can use if there is external shape machining is there, plane surface machining is there, like uh, slot cutting, keyway cutting, anything is there, we can use, we can describe such kind of things here. Coming to digit 5, any auxiliary holes or gear to teeth are available on the external shape we can describe them in the digit 5 no auxiliary holes we can use 0 suppose if you have axial holes we can use 1 if you have axial holes with indexing like holes there are 6 or 12 holes are there then we can use 1 2 3 4 5 holes like that if such kind of holes are there we can use 2 digit and for 3, 4, 5, in this figure, it is self-explanatory, all the details are given. So that's how the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 digits, the meaning of various digits filled in this digital information have got certain meanings which describes the rotational part and its uh, external and internal characteristics, everything. Similarly, I would like to discuss about uh, the other elements like poly code structure in the OPS coding system. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 forms the form code and uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, the, the last four digits in this code are called as supplementary code. You can give the details like dimensioning of the part, initial requirement of the bar stock, accuracy levels, etc. can be filled in these digits, which is a polycode structure. So this supplementary code plus form code gives you the total nine digit code of the OP system and that's why it is a mixed code because it contains both monocode structure up to 5 digits and polycode structure from 6th to 9th digits. In the secondary code like A, B, C, D, as I told you already that A, B, C, D is manufacturer can give his own meaning, can, he, can give his own information in A, B, C, D code. So this is how the OPS code structure works. 
let us go and discuss the next coding and classification system which is multi class multi class system developed by oir organization for industrial research the system is basically flexible allowing the user company to customize the classification and coding scheme to a large extent to fit its own products and applications multi class uses a hierarchical or decision tree code structure in which the preceding digits depends on value of previous digits the coding consists of 30 digits these are divided into two regions one provided by oir the secondary designed by the user to meet specific needs and requirements a prefix precedes the code number and id is used to identify the type of part next variety of uh, methodology of this is production flow analysis work parts with identical or similar routings are classified into part families production flow analysis is method of classification based on the manufacturing attributes the procedure for pfa production flow analysis which is developed by burbridge it requires the following steps first data collection second sorting of process routings third is preparation of pfa chart and fourth one is cluster analysis another important concept is for grouping of parts is composite part concept let me define what is called as a composite part a composite part is a part all the family members of a family it's a hypothetical part of a given family containing the features of all the family members which includes all the design and manufacturing attributes of the family in general an individual part in the family will have some features of the family but not all of them a production cell for a part family would consist of those machines that required to produce the composite family composite part we can easily design a production cell comprising of certain production facilities which are intended to manufacture the parts of a given family you can design that by taking simply the composite part and if the composite part is able to manufacture on the set of facilities then the set of facilities are able to manufacture all the parts of the family so a cell can be easily created or designed using the composite part and such a cell would be able to produce any family member by omitting operations corresponding to features not possessed by the composite part composite part features and corresponding manufacturing operations you can see in this slide we have certain features identified let us say external cylinder the corresponding manufacturing operation is a turning operation facing of the cylinder the corresponding manufacturing operation is facing cylindrical step a step turning operation is required smooth surface external cylindrical smoothing operation like grinding axial hole drilling operation is required counter boring its counter boring operation is required internal threads a tapping operation is required let us now discuss machine cell designs based upon the group technology concept we have so far seen how the group technology is used to group the parts based upon several methods we have discussed and among that the production flow analysis exploits the manufacturing attributes this is required to design a set of facilities i call it as a cell a cell is containing one 
two or few machines put together and these machines are able to produce the group of parts we can call that as a family if these machines produce that family of parts i call this as a machine family this machine family produce that part family because if you know that we can easily identify the group of machines and if you group them together then you can reduce the transportation cost that means part movement cost and easy to control and flow of machine flow of parts among the machines would become very 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 easy that's why the concept of cells has been developed machines few machines can be formulated into cell we call it as a family machine family and the cell can be controlled independently automatically in different modes of operations are there but this facility is called as a manufacturing cell i am now going to discuss what are the different cell designs available which is exclusively developed based upon the group technology we can have a single machine cell we can have multiple machines with manual handling multiple machines with mechanized handling manufacturing flexible manufacturing cell flexible manufacturing system now methods of part family matrix formulation in group technology how you can formulate a machine cell one machine is machining several parts another machine is machining several parts how do you identify machine parts as well as how do you identify machine family as well as part family because i wanted to know a part family and the machines that are producing this part family i call this as i already discussed that this is called as a machine family <coughs> this can be done based on similarity cohesion method rank order clustering method cluster identification method let us discuss what is called as similarity cohesion method first use machine part matrix then compute pairwise similarity quotient you take in this example in this slide we have parts up to 6 we have machines up to number a b c d e there are six parts and five machines and in this there are certain columns are filled with one number which indicates that the part 3 machine on a part 3 also machines on b part 1 will be machine on c also on machine e part 2 machine on b and d part 3 a b and d part 4 c and e part 5 a and d part 6 only on e these are these are the the details which we can Uh, inscribe in this part machine incidence matrix using this matrix the further analysis can be done i can now calculate similarity between two machines how do i calculate similarity between two machine based based upon the number of components that are being produced here we can calculate it as similarity between a and b is equal to 1 by 1 plus 2 is 0.33 similarity between a and c can be 0 by 0 plus 4 is 0 and similarity between a and d can be calculated 2 by 2 plus 1 is 0.67 so using the formula given in the previous slide i can easily calculate the similarity coefficient between the machine a and machine b 
Now, if similarity coefficient is 0.33 is considered, let us say, we can group A and D, A and B, B and C, and C and E. All these four can be clubbed into one cluster. And uh, remaining, because all these three are, all these for all these four pairs, the similarity coefficient is more than 0.33. Remaining cannot be clustered if you take a similarity coefficient 0.33 is the means of clustering. So these four forms a cluster, and the remaining these forms a D cluster group. So now from the previous matrix, we can formulate a cell with A, D and B. And the corresponding part family is 2, 3 and 5. Similarly, another cell can be formulated using the machine C and E. The corresponding part family is 1, 4 and 6. You must take care to assure that each cell has all the machines it needs. Sometimes a couple of families needs a key machine. In this case, the manager must decide to either replicate the common machine or share it between the two cells creating a bottleneck and scheduling problem of each cell. So we have to take care of the scheduling as well as uh, the planning, otherwise it becomes a bottleneck. This is a typical one of the cost problems in CMS. Whenever you have a machine that has to belong to one group, one cell, more than one cell, if the machine is to be kept in more than one cell, then the management has to take a decision whether to purchase another same type of machine and kept it in the next cell or the additional operations that are going to have it can be outsourced or the same machine can be used for long hours in order to produce the machining operations of the other cell as well. So these are the three criteria can be used to avoid bottleneck machine. So summarizing this, we have to calculate similarity coefficients between the machines. Once you have a part machine incidence matrix and cluster machines based upon the similarity coefficients and determine the parts that are required for these machines and we call them as a part family. Decide if machine replication is cost effective in case of bottleneck. Relay out facility and cross train the workforce. If you do like this, the manufacturing cell concept can be, in, can be introduced because of manufacturing cell concept. Cellular manufacturing, we call that as a cellular manufacturing system. And cellular manufacturing system has got several advantages in which the resources are minimized. That means number of machines are minimized. We need not have to have a replication of the machines. And the part travel distance within the cell is minimized. So the transportation costs are reduced and the cycle time is also reduced because the part unnecessary movement between the two machines is completely avoided in the cell manufacturing system. We have discussed only one clustering method that is similarity equation method. The other clustering method is rank order clustering method. The rank order clustering method was developed in 1982 by King and accordingly according to the rank order clustering method it also uses the parts part machine incidence matrix the parts and machine cells automatically by structuring and computing the matrix with binary weights we can develop a computer algorithm to solve the cluster problem it may not solve if machines are needed by more than one family which forces intelligence in application in hand scanning after several ordering iterations. The rank order clustering method I am going to discuss. In this, the part incidence matrix you may take. Each row of the machine or parts matrix read the pattern of cell entries 
as a binary word, rank the rows by decreasing binary value, equal values stay in same order. Ask if new rank rows the rows in the matrix are the same as previous order. If it is yes, stop, otherwise continue. Reform machine part incidence matrix with rows in new different descending order. Now rank the column by decreasing binary word weightage. Are current columns weights the same as current column order? Yes. Then it is stopped? No, it can be continued. Then reform the matrix column order per rank order and return to step 1. That's how this works. I can explain this with a small example. Same machine part incidence matrix you can see. In this, we can give binary weightages. The binary weightages given are for 2 power 0 in the 6th column, 2 power 1 in the 5th column, 2 power 2 in 4th column, 2 power 3, 3rd column, 2 power 4. Now calculate the weights of rows. First row A containing 1 in 3rd column and 4 in 5th column. So its weight is, is 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 10. Then similarly calculate the weightage, binary weightage, total of the binary weightage for row, second row that is B. It is 24, then 36, like that 26 and 37. Now arrange these things in increasing order of its weights as shown here. Now, after this, give weightages, binary weightages to the rows and column, calculate the column weightages and give weightages, weightages in a rank. That means, similarly when you calculate it, the first column has got total of the 24 binary weightages. So, you give the rank number 1. Similarly, fourth column you get 24, rank number 2, rank number 3, 16. Like that, we can give some ranks. And now, exchange rows in the decreasing order of the column values. That means column ranks. As in the, in the rank wise, you can arrange the columns. After this, again, go to step 1. You give weightages to the columns and then calculates row matrix weightages and you repeat these steps all the four steps continuously till you do not expect a change that means if there is no change till that time if you go on repeating it automatically you can see that two clusters forms here the cluster is one in one in color with red boundary and the other one is pink boundary we got two clusters the in which automatically machines as well parts are clustered two machines machine e and c forms one group which machines part one four and six other machines a b and d forms another group and which machines part three two and five that's how simultaneously both machine cells as well as part families can be formulated. There are certain issues in the clustering techniques. The rank order clustering oscillations indicate need of machine replications. Sometimes you will get in the matrix, in the matrix, one element which belongs to both the clusters. That is oscillations. Which indicates that particular machine belongs to both first family as well as family two. It can be avoided by replicating the machines. Presence of outliers or voids in the finished clusters. If you see the cluster, there are certain space spaces which are unfilled, which are called as voids. Void indicates skipped machines in a cell. Some machine can be there, but which is not there. So it indicates a skipping of a machine in a cell. Sometimes outliers, as I told you, outlier is one which indicates 
that particular element can exist both in first cluster or second cluster. Outlier indicates the need of machine replications. Generally speaking, these clustering algorithms are designed to convert existing routes for facility reorganization. They require a previous engineering study to be performed to develop a series of routers and a core sample of parts that represents most of the production in the shop. Alternative means to develop cells and families. They can be company specific. If so, they are typical hierarchical and list important characteristics of the part or process or a mix. Physical characteristics like size, geometrical features or materials can also be considered for these things. Since they are specific, they tend to be more accurate in building part families. Using group technology classification and coding system, parts are coded by experts at the company. The newly coded part is used to search existing production databases for similarly coded products. The new part is assigned to the family. It most closely matches. Its routing is thus get set and only minor variations need to be considered. Using specific digits, a company can target marketing in certain areas of their product mix. In a greenfield shop, managers can develop facility design in the form of reasonable cells by selecting reasonable seed parts as suggested by their group technology system. These seeds can be used to build routers, hence appropriate machine clusters. Using group technology clustering concepts, process clustering evolve parts as opposed to clustering involved by, by process. Friends, after clustering analysis, we know that we can formulate machine cells and thus we can enhance the productivity through machine cells. And thus, the group technology based applications are several in number and let us just see or list out the various applications of group technology. Group technology can be applied for shop floor layout, existing process layout can be changed into group technology based layout and that's we have already seen how to formulate clusters and like that. The process planning activity can be exploited to the fullest possible by group technology. Similarly, designing using parametric or a tribal or similar kind of thing. Designing activity can be reduced by application of group technology. Similarly, scheduling, batch scheduling, job shop scheduling, flow shop scheduling, the activity can be effectively controlled and optimum schedules can be generated using the concept of group technology. Similarly, numerical control part programming. Part programming for one part can be developed and part programming for the similar part with less editing can be developed with ease by the application of group technology. Cost estimations reduced can be reduced. And these are all potential advantages of group technology being adopted in the today's manufacturing scenario. The other advantages by the application of group technology are reduced production lead times, reduced WIP working process, reduced labor, reduced tooling costs and tooling, reduced rework and scrap materials, reduced setup times, reduced ordering time to delivery, also improves human relations and also reduces paper work. Only few disadvantages. Sometimes the cost of material handling system is more, but it's only case specific. 
not in general. Material handling cost is reduced, but in certain cases, the cost may increase. Cost of implementation of machine cells is more, because if the existing scenario is there, we have to uproot the machines and then to refurbish the machines into cells, which is a cost capital in intensive project. Thus, cost of implementation in machine cell is more. Preparation of process planning time is also more. Except these few disadvantages, we have all other advantages with the group technology. Hence, implementation of group technology in the present manufacturing industries is worth getting your cash returns in short span of time. Thank you.